So today we are going to have a look at Aancio again, and today we're going to create a competition. In the previous videos, I showed you how to install uh, Aancio. So have a look at that if you haven't done that. I basically demoed it on installing it on Windows, and I found it really, really easy to do. And I've just come back to it on the computer and it started really well, uh, really quickly. And I've just upgraded the modules as well. So if you need to, when you first come back in, if you haven't used it for a while, just go to modules here and then click on update the NCO and it will just go through and make sure that it's fully up to date before you do any kind of extra work. Okay. So when we first come in and we've got no new tournaments at all, then it just says no competitions exist along the bottom here. So we can either go to the competition menu and choose new or new tournament down here. Now competition and tournament are the same thing. So don't get too worried about it. Um, so first of all, we're just going to say new. And then this is the screen that we'll be uh, introduced to. There's a few fields on here. Not all of them need to be entered. Don't worry too much about that. But you can come back also and enter them uh, if you get them wrong or you want to change them don't, you can come back in again as well and change them so it's not a one chance you don't get just one chance at doing these things so first of all um, the competition code needs to be something nice and short and sweet in a code format that you kind of recognize that individualizes your shoot really so if you were i mean you could start off obviously i'm in the uk i could start off and say something like uk um, WRS 18 um, D1 um, I was full up actually so we are one two three four five six seven eight characters in there maximum so eight characters to work with so if it was an AGB shoot AGB uh, 821 day one something like that so we've got that much many characters to go with not brilliant to be honest but code is a code so it needs to be quite short okay so we're going to call this ab1 archery blog one okay then the name we just give our uh, competition our full name now these name this name is going to come out on the printouts as well so you need to remember that but i say again you can always change it afterwards so if i say archery blog um, wa 18 meter competition there you go a short name that can be a, the same as the uh long name doesn't have to be different so i'm just going to copy and paste that in there and then we've got organized by and there's two fields here as you say as you see here so you would just put your club name or your kind of country name again i haven't got much space to put things in here again how many have i got in here so 10 spaces in there. So I can't even put Archery Blog in there. Um, Archery B then. And then what you could do is here, you would put in your full title, really. So coming down to the Oris compliance, this is kind of ticking this box will make the tournament Oris compliant. Um, that's to kind of Olympic standards. Uh, you don't have to have that ticked on, but if you do have it checked, then the reports, you get some different varying, varying formats to your reports, so you can get some different outputs. So it's worth playing with maybe afterwards, checking it on and off to see uh, if you prefer those reports or not. But I'm going to leave it unchecked at the moment. So now we come on to um, one of the localization rules. So if you click on here, you'll see rules from all the different countries who have sent their details to ANCO to be entered in. So the top one is World Archery, and then we've got Archery GB, and then Austria, Canada, um, Denmark, Netherlands, French, uh, France, Icelandic, Italian, New Zealand, Norwegian. So if your country's on there, you will find your sets of your set of rules on there for your sort of localized competitions. Um, 
So if I choose World Archery and then I'll see a competition type, I'll see a sub menu come down. And this is where I'll get to choose from my different um, feet or distances, um, 70 and 50 meter rounds, my indoor 18 and 25 meter rounds as well and many others so if, but if i go back and i choose my own country's archery gbs this is where you'll find a lot of our own um, rounds have been set up such as various again 70 and 50 meter rounds but also if you go right down to the bottom here um, this is where we'll find our archery gb rounds if i click on that then i get another uh, sub rule and this is where our weird and wonderful names for our yard kind of distances are held so we've got a york hereford bristols in here windsors um, warwick's things like that outdoor rounds and then our short metrics as well and some indoor rounds such as worcester's brace uh, stafford's and portsmouth's as well in here so that's where you will find your various rules. So have a look around in here to see what you're, to find what you're looking for. So I'm going to go back to World Archery and I'm going to pick my 18 meter. And, and then when we come down to our sub rule for this one, this is where we get to choose our classes. Now we can have every class under the sun or we can just choose certain types. I'm going to choose just junior and senior but you can edit all these afterwards. Okay. Now, when it comes down here to reset to predefined values, this is good if you want to reset everything back to where you started. So if you've edited the classes and uh, the divisions, the distances and things like that, and you've sort of messed up and screwed up, then you can just reset that. So I'm not going to tick that today at the moment anyway. And then the place. So this is going to be your full kind of um, address or location of where you're going to have your shoot. And I think that if this is um, a WRS shoot, then you need to uh, make sure that this matches um, the information that you placed on your WRS uh, information sheet that you submitted to them when you submitted uh, application to make it a WRS shoot. So for me, I'm just going to make this up. Okay, so there's my place and then my time zone. I think you'll know how to what to set on there. And then the day of the start and the end of the tournament. So it's in year, month and day on here. So if it's one day, keep it to one day. But if it's going to be over a couple of days, then you'd want to extend that date. Uh, it has jumped to the next Sunday. So it'll always jump to the next coming Sunday. That's fine for me for this example anyway. Uh, and paper, it's either US letter or A4. So I'm leaving it on A4. Currency, it looks like it's set to the euro. Uh, you can change that currency symbol if you are uh, having this set up for checking payments and things like that, where, whereas a lot of people may not. So if you're not too worried, you can just leave it as it is. The printout uh, language says set by user. That's fine because then um, the user will, the user's browser and things like that, um, will change the printout language, I think, based on their location or their language settings on their uh, PC, for example. And the same with the printout character set. I'm going to change, uh, leave that to normal Latin because um, it's just easier that way. Obviously, if you, there are Chinese characters, Japanese characters, etc., in there as well, if you need to change those over. And finally, at the bottom here, we've got the uh, enable HHT system. Uh, for the handheld entering data system and the enable the in Iancio scorekeeper um, the Iancio scorekeeper is the app so you can enter your scores via the app and I did a quick video on how to do that as well if you want to check that out uh, you just need to set that to yes or no mainly what that means is that you've got an option here but obviously the pro is the paid version so a lot of people won't be in interested in that so you just choose the normal Iancio scorekeeper version here and what that will traditionally do is it will uh, on the score sheets it will put a qr code on the score sheet and then the iancio scorekeeper app 
within that app you would then scan in your QR code and able to uh, enter the scores into the app but I'm going to say no at the moment I can always come back and change that so after we've entered those few details we're kind of ready to go really and if there's any uh, problems Iancio will tell you there is a problem uh, and you've got something wrong on your entries so I'm just going to save that now great that's saved and why do I know it's saved because I've got uh, different menu options now I've got uh, different menus along the bottom here and I've got a whole host of new menus along the top so I can get on and uh, play with my competition you'll also see where my archery blog WA 18 meter competition has been used at the top here as well and also the selected competition name archery blog 18 meter competition archery blog the street with the address and the dates on there as well and the code at the end there has been used along the top here as well okay so if i now go down to competition and close that has closed that competition off and what I'd have here is my list of competitions you can see the first one I've entered here along here all my details my basic details along the top I can then go and create a new, another new tournament if I want to do another new competition we'll just go back and open this one okay so I'm just going to go and open this one and then I'd come into this screen which is really what I've just entered already but just kind of condensed version of that so here it's talked about session one 24 targets four archers per target um, and it's just classed as having one session in here and I'll basically go into that and probably amend that later on in another video if we go into the competition menu I can edit my competition info and if I go to that option there could you see where that was that was edit competition info competition info that takes us back to the screen where we completed the details to set up the competition okay the final thing i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to export this uh, tournament so that i'm going to then delete the tournament and then show you how to import it back in again now if we go down to exports and the best option to choose in case you've added some pictures in here and i will talk about pictures later on as well is that you can export the data with any images or jpegs that you've included which is quite important because if you don't then you may lose those especially this is handy if you want to transfer the file around you want to pass it to someone else uh, put it on a different machine or you just need to send it off to someone to uh, give you some help with it things like that so if we export the tournament with pictures basically I'm going to say save and it's created a file with my competition code ab1 and then dot Iancio on the end there I'm just going to press OK right so we've exported that file so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this competition and what you have to do is you have to copy and paste or you can type it straight in that code there into that box and then you can delete the tournament okay that'll be gone forever so there we go so now there's no new there's no tournaments listed because I've deleted it but now I can go up here to competition and import okay so we've come into the uh, import competition page I'm just going to browse for the uh, file that we saved earlier ab1.dnc double click that and then I'm going to just click on import and there we go we've got our competition back in and then if I just close that down we can see our competition so that's just how to uh, import or export and import them back in again if you need to obviously it's always good to back them up uh, during while you're creating them as well and adding uh, data to the competition okay that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it if you did give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, in the next Iancio video we'll look at uh, adding more details to our competition getting participants in setting up the sessions and uh, obviously finally entering scores and getting reports out